The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Monday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got markets picking things up in negative territory. But things looking a little dicey last night. Happened to pull up the futures at about 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time myself. I said, ah, they're only down about 20 points, 15, 20 points. I said, that's a quick acceleration in the first hour. But guess what? That was almost the lows. As S&Ps make it down to about 43.60, we chop around between 43.60 and 43.70 overnight. Get a little bit of a lift at 7 a.m. this morning, and currently we're negative by nine points right now, trading at 43.78. All the markets in the red this morning, NASDAQ 100, negative by 33. Quite the day on Friday, man, from early, early Friday, almost midnight, Thursday night into Friday, you're trading at 14,300. You trade down, folks, almost 600 points. We'll call it 570. NASDAQ 100 points, man. You just back things up to last Friday, uh, one Friday removed. You're talking about, excuse me, that was Thursday, not Friday. Markets closed on Friday. 14,642. Yeah, the NASDAQ 100 basically losing 900 points from where we were uh, Friday, April 8th to Thursday before Good Friday last week. Quite the acceleration this morning. We're negative by 33. Dow's off 42 this morning. You get the Russell off four. We jump to commodities. Crude. Boy, talk about an acceleration, man. It's not stopping. We got 108 overnight. We're trading at 107.41 right now. Crude, last Monday, 92.93. You're talking about, what is that, $15 in a week from $92 to 107? Volatility, man, in spades. Gold contract catching a bit as well. 2003 this morning. Right now, party like it's 1999. There you go, 1999 and the price of the gold contract up $24. We take a look at gold on a daily Quite the acceleration there. Uh, you chopped around at the 50% retracement line for a while, and that is the 50% going from the run it had on February 3rd, about 1790, up to 2078. The highs made in early March. We pull back to the 50%. And the one thing I want to do point out is these tails also hit to the 618, which was at about 1898. Right now, trading at 1999 in the gold contract. Back to a 15-minute chart as we jump to notes and bonds. Technically flat. Boy, that was quite a sell-off on Thursday, man. That was a lot of the action you saw in terms of where the market went on Thursday as well. We were trading at 121.09 early on Thursday. You closed out the session at 119.22. You're talking about a full point and a half in the tenure, man. Overnight, we were approaching, I think it was 2.88% on the 10-year when we jump around right now you're looking at a yield of 2.82 percent we're up at 2.88 three percent is totally in the mix right now uh which is remarkable when you look at where we've been in the 10-year i've been talking about it man yeah we accelerated out of this trend line even if we get back within this trend line uh you give it enough time and you'll get back within this trend line in you know 120 and 122 in no time as we go to negative prices quite the acceleration we've chopped around a bit we got a low right now building at about 119.10 or so and that is the low that takes you back to six days ago on April 12th as well. But yields right back to the highs we had at that area. Uh, higher yields and lower market coming at you, folks. The 30 years negative by six ticks. That's quite a sell off as well. Now, what's interesting here is I talked about this on my program recently. You take a look at the 30 year. This is a trend line, folks, on my chart on the Thinkorswim platform on a monthly going back as far as I have it. To 1999. Every time we fit it, we bounce. Uh, this might be a different story, though, as you see it actually breaking below that trend line. This is on a monthly. It's been quite a month of the month of April, man. Quite a start in terms of where we've come really from March of last year in the COVIDs, right? Uh, the COVID high of yields. But really, look where we were at the beginning of the year. Oh, that's the 30 year, excuse me, the 10 year. And that's the trend line that we're looking at on the daily. You're talking about, folks, from where we were at the beginning of that trend line of 135. That was last August. You're talking about eight months ago. And just like that, we're at 119 handle, let alone where we began the year. Pretty remarkable. All right.
where do we go from here? Let's kick it off with more bank earnings. Bank of America finishing it up this morning. We got most of the banks last week. Bank of America out this morning. Pretty decent earnings. Uh, they're basically flat right now, up by about 10 pennies when we got the market barely in the red. You see the volatility on their numbers this morning. And let's jump into the numbers. 4.72 billion in revenue, down 7.1% from a year earlier, but Analysts were looking for a 16% decline. The best results were in equities business, where revenue soared 9.5% to a record $2 billion. That's trading operations, okay? Uh, equity, just these banks and the trading departments, they crushed it, that's for sure. Traders cost the U.S. finance industry had a better than expected first quarter as volatility already simmering on inflation. The war spikes things as well. When you look at fixed income uh, revenue, that's in the black. Equities in the red, you see quite a quarter across the board. You back it up, man. Um, big numbers across the board. Net interest income rising 13% for Bank of America to $11.6 billion. Companies' loan balances up to $993 billion with a B. That's almost $1 trillion, folks. Uh, up 10%. From a year earlier, and the market was looking for 986, so they beat it by $7 billion in terms of what they have on the loan balance line. Lending's been a key focus for investors, with government stimulus programs keeping demand weak for much of 2021. Uh, some of the other numbers in there, net income decreasing to $7.1 billion, or $0.80 cents a share. The market was looking for 74, so that's a beat. Company-wide revenue, $23.2 billion. That meets the estimates. Uh, and this is an interesting one. So they released $362 million in reserves in the first quarter. That follows a $851 million release in the previous three months. The interesting thing, thing, thing there is you actually have J.P. Morgan increasing the reserves that they had. You have Bank of America decreasing the reserves that they have. A little bit of a divergence among the big banks out there, depending on where their business is. Excuse me. <clears throat> Non-interest expenses falling to 15.3 billion. So they cut those a bit and client balances in the Merrill Lynch wealth management business rising 6.6% 6 .6 to 3.1 trillion. That is with a T. Uh, so we jump over Bank of America pretty flat today. Uh, some of the banks negative today with the market. We jump over to Bank of America. Uh, down about 50 cents. You're going to see them all barely in the red right now. You jump over to City, barely in the red at 50.74. Goldman Sachs this morning, barely in the red right now by about 50 cents. Ah, we got a bid ask that spreads, uh, spans the close on Friday. Morgan Stanley, pretty flat to negative as well. All right, let's jump around to some of the other stories you got up here. And where are we going to kick things off with? Let's see. Uh, we got Bank of America. Let's jump down the line to some of the stocks. So, Twitter. They're a little bit higher after the company's board of directors adopted a so-called poison pill to prevent Elon Musk from increasing his stake in the company past 15 percent. Uh, Elon put out the bid for 54.20 for Twitter shares. Very interesting, of course, how this is traded on that time. There was the news of the offer. 54.20 was the price. Got within 21 pennies of that price. God bless whoever was out there buying at 53.99. When realistically, uh, not a lot of reward for the risk you're taking buying at 53.99. Probably a, a momentum play. They got caught at the top, just like that. You actually finish the day in the red. Talk about a lesson, folks. Right? Uh, somebody comes in with a bid for Twitter. The stock is at 45 bucks. They say they're going to buy it at 54, and it closes the day lower at 44 bucks. Today, you are going to open about a buck 50 higher. We'll talk a little bit more about this. Got to talk about it a little bit at least. Elon out there tweeting with a tender, tender, love me tender is what he says. Uh, let's jump. Tesla shares this morning up a bit. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back after the break. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. 
tfnn.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by seven points right now. NASDAQ 100 negative by 32. We got the opening bell in about 12 minutes to kick off the trading week and check out natural gas, folks. Mm, boy, talk about volatility, man. It's a nonstop run right now. March 16th, you're trading at about five bucks. You're trading at $7.56 this morning, folks. That is a straight shot, man. How many red bars we got in the span since March 15th? You're talking about one two, three, four, five, six red bars, and really you only got two decent red bars where there was actually negative action. The rest of them, uh, just kind of some small little tails with a red in between. Just remarkable natural gas. Uh, they're talking about in the Tiger stand accelerating higher. We'll see where it stops, but all commodities right now. Talk about a bull man. Crude up to 130. You check out the run crude had December 20th, $66. You make it up to 130, you back around. We've kind of chopped around. Looks like we got a bid somewhere around 95 bucks. Maybe we'll call it 97, maybe you're at 100. Uh, but $95 looks to be a little bit of support for crude. Right now we're at 107.77 price of crude. The recent high, March 24th in crude, you're talking about 116.64. Not sure we make it back up to 130 right now, but we will see, man. Uh, volatility in spades, and we got to talk. Jump over to the gold contract, man. Uh, gold up 22 bucks at 19.97. If you haven't tried out the gold report yet, folks, my dad, he's got a new issue today. New new gold report comes out every Monday morning. He's got a new buy in there as well. He's got a couple active positions in there as well. Great time to try out the gold report if you're into that market. If you're into the gold equities, we got some volatility in that gold market in spades, as we say. All right, let's jump around to some of the stocks that are making moves this morning. Now, we talked about Twitter, okay? So, uh, Elon tweets, love me tender, days after the Twitter takeover offer. So, Elon's out there uh, saying, love me tender. Uh, of course, a play on the Elvis Presley song, but also a play on possibly a tender offer to the Twitter uh, shareholders. Uh, he had a TED Talk on Thursday, always interesting, I said TED Talk on Thursday right in the light of this, hinted at the possibility of a hostile bid in which he would bypass the board and put the offer directly to the shareholders. It would be utterly indefensible not to put the offer to the shareholder vote. Well, that one is debatable for sure. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, he was out there tweeting a lot. Now, one thing I did want to mention here, because it, He's such a great promoter, folks. He's one of the most brilliant people in the world. He's changed the world for a lot of great things, okay? So I give him a lot of grief. You can praise somebody at the same time as calling them out, 
for the, the wrongs that they commit, okay? So he is flaunting every financial regulation he can in this battle with Twitter. Uh, he's already getting sued for that. I think I had something out here. I saw the headline earlier that a court ruled that his uh, offer to take to, uh, Tesla private at 420 was false. Saw that headline out there this morning. I'll try and find that one as well. But the one thing I want to talk about on the TED Talk is that when he had that deal with the SEC in the first place, okay, when he relinquished his role as CEO uh, chairman and signed a pack with them, one of the things he agreed to, okay, when you sign a deal like that with the SEC, is to not come out and say that you did nothing wrong. It's kind of part of the deal, usually, and it's not just for Elon, that is, I was reading about it this weekend, it is usually one of the statements in there, is that you can't come out, and I forget the exact terminology, you can't come out and basically say, uh, I signed this deal, but they forced me to, and I did nothing wrong. That's exactly what he did in the TED Talk. So he actually broke the decree that he made with the SEC, going all the way back to the first time that he was talking about taking them private. OK, uh, nobody's even talking about that in the TED talk because of all the stuff going on with Twitter. Pay attention to it because it matters, folks. OK, the court comes out today. They said it was false. It was false. He had to relinquish chairmanship of Tesla over it. And he's out there saying that it's a big witch, witch hunt on him. And uh, they forced him to. They pressured him to. It's unfortunate that he's flaunting all these regulations because they are in place for a reason. And uh, they do matter. But nonetheless, we'll see how this plays out in Twitter. And as your, uh, your responsibility as a trader, as investor with your money, folks, is to question the validity of the statements. And I would question everything that Elon Musk says. Doesn't mean that he won't deliver for his shareholders, okay? Doesn't mean if he gets control of Twitter, it wouldn't be good for the shareholders. But just second guess everything that he says. Um, I think it was in 2019 that he was on stage at a Tesla event, he came out and said that by the end of 2020 that they would have a million robo-taxis on the road for Tesla. Any other CEO would probably be sued for statements like that that were so erroneous. Obviously, it's 2022. Obviously, we're nowhere near that. Obviously, Elon knew in 1999 when he said that they'd have a million robo-taxis on the, on the roads in 2020, that that was just a straight-out, bold-faced lie as the CEO of a public company. And nonetheless, here we are, but people just let it go. There's my Elon rant. He's a brilliant guy. I love what he did with changing the world for electric vehicles, changing the world with space tourism, space travel, um, private space entrepreneurship, okay? But it doesn't excuse just flaunting the regulations. And if the richest man in the world doesn't have to follow him, folks, then what are they even for? Because they we've said enough. We'll go from there. All right, jumping down the line to what else we got going on. Let's jump away from Twitter. Serious. They're 2% lower in the pre-market. Morgan Stanley downgrades it to underweight from equal weight. Morgan Stanley said auto market headwinds would negatively impact Sirius. Stocks outperformance over the past year as well. We jump over to Sirius. XM. There's your daily. We're going to open down about 10 pennies right now from where we were. Let's take a look a little bit of a longer term chart. Five, we are weekly. Yeah, it's just been chopping around. Let's take a look at the Analyze tab. We'll jump to the fundamentals on the Thinkorswim platform. We scroll down. You're talking about a company. Uh, come on. Give me the market cap. I was just curious here. Come on. All right. It's not loading for me yet. We'll pull it up. I'll get it. I was curious because I have Sirius XM in my car. Um, I was leasing vehicles. They were coming automatically, of course. Now I own a car. Thankfully, I bought one instead of leasing a while back, so I didn't have to roll into a new vehicle right now. Because of the pressure, of course, with the new vehicle, the lack of supply. Uh, but the point being is, for the first time in a while, I find myself actually considering canceling Sirius. It is a very expensive uh, service. <coughs> now, you can negotiate with them. You can tell them you're going to cancel, folks, if you have a Sirius XM subscription out there. It doesn't hurt to give them a call. They are actually a company that they can maybe cut your deal. Because what they love to do is they love to sign you up for like a three-month, six-month deal. And then it transitions to, you know, $30 a month or something like that. Staggering, $30 a month, I think, is what they charge on standard pricing. I'll pull it up. And for the first time in a while, yeah, call them. It's 5 bucks per month for the first year, right, stuff like that. They'll give you that deal again, folks. I've done it. Okay, say, I'm going to cancel. Can you give me a promo deal? Point being, there is so much great content. There is so much great music. I subscribe to Bloomberg. I love listening to Bloomberg in my car. The thing is, is I actually have access to Bloomberg television as a result of subscribing to the Bloomberg website itself for news and content. 
So I say to myself, okay, I don't even need Sirius to listen to Bloomberg anymore. That's what I love in the car the most. Uh, Amazon has a free music service, which I get. I do not pay for the Amazon service. I have a bunch of music on my own. There's a bunch of more affordable subscription plans if you're just listening to music. So am I paying $30 a month just to listen to Bloomberg that I actually already have if I pull up the Bloomberg app on my phone and just watch TV? You get the point, all right? They are facing some heavy competition, and now you have the fact that new cars are actually going to hurt them because so much of their business plan is built on the fact of premium vehicles offering an automatic first year maybe second year maybe of Sirius XM included in the purchase of the car and once you get them you don't want to give it up so that's the brilliance of it right they include it they get the car companies say you know you buy a, a BMW whatever it is that's what I have so I know there's many other car companies out there that do it but they include it and I tell you folks for the first time in a if there's a lot of great competition out there, I should think you cancel that. Um, yeah, as they're saying, cancel them and then re renew for that cheaper price. Maybe that's what I'll do. Thanks for the advice, guys. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. we got markets open, and you're catching a little bit of a bid, at least in the first 30 seconds of trading. There's a pop for you, man, from 43.76. Right now, we're trading at 43.84. S&P is negative by three. You get the Dow jumping to positive territory right now. NASDAQ 100 negative by 10 points on the open. We jump to commodities. Crude 
hanging at 107 and change, 107.72. We're within about a quarter of the highs we had last night at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And how about that gold contract catching a bid? Gold hanging right at about 1997 after jumping to 2003. And let's jump to notes and bonds right now. Flat, technically, from where we were, although overnight you had a rise to about 2.88%. The yield, when we were at a lower price of 119.12, that's a big pop, man. We just popped 17 points. You're talking about half a point, folks. Overnight we trade lower, and then we jump back. These moves, we're becoming so used to them, does not look too dramatic because of the move we had on Thursday. But man, a half a point move and a half a point move again in the, in, in the reverse direction all before the market opens. It's normal for what we have going on right now, but normally six, seven, eight basis points of action prior to 930 open. That is some serious action on the 10 year as right now. Let's get the exact tick 2.82 percent. The yield on the 10 year. Yeah, highest level in the yield in more than three years on that 10 year. Not too surprising in terms of where we are approaching 3% on the 10 year. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. This is what I want to jump to before we jump uh, to some of the stocks that I have down that list. But this one's important. Global investors flee China, fearing that risks eclipse rewards. The one thing I want to focus on from this article, so they talk about a bunch of things in here. They obviously talk about the lockdowns in China, uh, potentially hurting their GDPs, etc., the risks going on with the government over there, putting the lockdowns on the companies over there, politics and governance factors should now set a cautious tone, especially for longer term commitments. Yeah, don't get caught up in long term, folks, because who knows where it's going to go in the long term. And this is the chart I want to talk about, though. Uh, is this it? Yes, China bond yield. So check this out. For the first time since 2010, Chinese benchmark sovereign 10-year notes, so basically the 10-year sovereign note for China versus the U.S., no carryover comparable to U.S. treasuries. You're not getting any type of a premium by putting your money in China versus putting your money in America. Think about that for a moment and where you'd choose to put your money. And returns in China's high-yield dollar credit market were the worst in at least a decade last quarter. Global funds have started to pull out, selling more than $7 billion worth of mainland-listed stock via exchange links with Hong Kong in March. They also disposed of $14 billion in Chinese government debt over the past two months, trimmed their credit holdings. Betting against China was considered the fifth most crowded trade in Bank of America's recent survey. They're worried about China's ties to Russia, it's scaring investors. Everyone was selling China bonds, so we're glad we did not buy any. And here's the chart. So this is China bond yields trade below treasuries for the first time in more than a decade. I mean, as recently, back uh, a year ago, you were talking about a 250 basis point premium, gone. Just like that, U.S. and the Chinese tenure basically at even as it got below that level. And you're talking about going back all the way, folks. Yeah. 2010, maybe that's even 2009 on that graph. Not sure where you fall. But that is a heads up in terms of where investor money is placing risks in China right now. Because if you told me I could buy a 10 year treasury with the United States or a 10 year note from communist China, there's no way I'm buying that one in China, right? There's definitely more risk over there if you're putting your money in China. Doesn't mean that's exactly how it's going to play out. Uh, our yields could skyrocket, causing a depreciation of the, you know, there's many things that could happen, okay? But pay attention to that one, because that was a heads up when I saw that in terms of a flat, <coughs> excuse me, spread between ours and China's 10-year government bonds. Quite a statement in terms of the risk associated with China right now, um, and everybody just selling everything to do with over there. Okay, let's jump down the lines for some of the other equities got over there. I wanted to jump to Wendy's. So Wendy's, uh, down a little bit. They get a downgrade uh, from to market perform from outperform. Less well positioned for a tighter consumer spending environment than some of its peers. I found that interesting. When you think about Wendy's, uh, they're the premium. And if you're the premium right now, you might have some problems. As we have inflation soaring, we have gas prices uh I think my car, folks, I have a BMW coupe. I think for the first time ever, it was more than $70 to fill it up. I do have to use the premium, but a little coupe. I don't have a huge tank. I, I don't know what exactly it was, but you're talking about 70 bucks for a little coupe. Um, yeah, gas prices, let alone food prices. CPI was up, what, 8.4% was the reading, 8.3% that we got last week. Wendy's might take a little bit of a hit, and there's your action on Wendy's. That's a daily. We back things up to a three-year weekly. Kind of interesting how you just chop around the lower portion of that, 
at about $20, the higher portion about 24, and we're trading at 20.59 for Wendy's down 1.4% as you have the markets trading higher. Check out the Dow up 132 right now. Let's jump to some of the banks and see how we're trading. Bank of America catches a bit. They were flat coming into the open, but the market likes their earnings. They were pretty decent. Up 1.5%. Let's see how some of the last uh, earnings from the banks. Yeah, Bank of America, excuse me, JP Morgan up 8 tenths percent. Goldman up 8 tenths percent. And Morgan Stanley up about 5 tenths percent right now. Back to Tesla. Tesla shares flat. Before we get into it, Twitter shares, they're basically flat as well, down to uh, two tenths percent within the close. So Tesla, we get Tesla and we get Netflix earnings this week, among some others. We jump over to Tesla shares. Their number's coming out on 420, Elon's favorite number. You think that's a coincidence, folks? I don't think that's a coincidence. They could have picked any day they wanted. Elon said, put them out on 420, man. Uh, Wednesday, Tesla earnings will be coming out. And you're talking about a $56 move priced in. Not really a big move when you think about it, folks. They're going to have their earnings. They're going to be out April 20th. We have volatility in the market anyway, which contributes to these moves. Okay, and you're talking about a $56 move priced into the earnings event, but you're talking about a $75 move if you want the implied volatility of options that expire on Friday. Now, the only reason I say that's not that big of a move, I mean, look at the moves that we have. We got $50 of moves in Tesla shares just in regular market volatility, right? You add in the earnings volatility, seems like a pretty fair price. For $75 of implied volatility, and we're only seven minutes into the trading week right now, and you have exposure all week, we get their numbers on Wednesday. We'll see how they come out, and we also get Netflix. Uh, these will be the two headliners this week. We jump over to them. Yeah, they are out tomorrow. So we get Netflix tomorrow. We get Tesla earnings on Wednesday. We'll pull up some of the other companies, but those are probably the two biggest headliners coming out this week. And you check out Netflix. Now, here's my point, right? Tesla you had about a $56 move for a, almost a $1,000 stock. So you're talking about maybe 6%, 5.5 to 6% implied volatility based around their earnings. Netflix is pushing almost a 9% volatility, right? You got a $32 move priced in for a $340 stock. And boy, here's what I'll say, folks. Uh, $35 for the whole week, okay? But boy, you talk about some expectations, man. Uh, where, can, where can Netflix go? Because it has been quite a pullback, man. You are well below the pre-COVID levels of almost $400. You came into COVID with Netflix trading at about 393, sold off to reach a low of 290, and we're trading at 340, down from 700. Uh, this thing chopped around for a while in between about 475 and 500. I mean, boy, if you get the expected move lower, folks, let's back this up even further because we just talked about it. What's the expected move lower, right? 30 something dollars, 32 dollars. You get $32, we're within about 300 bucks. You're trading back to where Netflix was more than four years ago, February of 2018. I don't think that's gonna happen, folks. In the long run, uh, we'll take a little bit longer look at Netflix when we get back, because they're gonna be around, they're a player. They are a play. streaming. We'll talk streaming when we get back, stay tuned. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So we got Netflix kicking things off with a little negative action, man. You just were trading at almost 342. You're trading at 337. Netflix down 1% ahead of their numbers. Again, tomorrow. Excuse me. Let me make sure. Yes, Netflix tomorrow. Tesla on Wednesday. Uh, $32 move priced in. Trading lower, though, man, the market. You get the NASDAQ 100 down about 11 points right now. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks before we get back into those streamers, as I said. Amazon shares, we spike higher, then we give some of it back right now. You're up a quarter percent right now on Amazon. Google shares up about a tenth of a percent right now. We jump over to Microsoft shares. Microsoft up about a tenth of a percent as well. And Apple, the big dog, AAPL. Basically flat, 165 right now for Apple. So we jump back, and I mentioned Netflix down 1.25%, man. You're just getting... Uh, Getting into some pretty interesting areas here for Netflix. We jump over to the fundamentals. You're talking about a company valued at $149 billion. And I say that as in, boy, you know. Anyway, I, I imagine in the longer term, folks, we'll see how they come out with their numbers. But you're trading at prices you saw four years ago. And they are the leader. I asked... Uh, my son in the house, five years old, okay, just turned five. And I talked about this last week, but Veneer, I said, what would you rather have if we gave you one option? He's got all the options, man. He's got Netflix, Disney, YouTube, um, even HBO. Uh, what would you rather have, though, Netflix or Disney? Because he loves them both. Watches a lot of Netflix. He loves Disney at night. He loves those musicals, loves Frozen. So which would you rather have, though? I think he wants, would go Disney if we really forced him. But he said YouTube. I didn't even bring YouTube into the conversation. He said, if I just get to choose one, I'd go YouTube. I said, man, Google. It's nothing like it, man, with YouTube. Uh, Netflix down to 338. But the article that I had up here that I want to talk about as well, this talks about John Stewart's show. So he had a big show on Comedy Central. Uh, he's now with Apple TV, left Comedy Central, The Daily Show, was on there forever. And... What it talks about is how hard it is, even for huge stars, somebody like Jon Stewart that just had a nightly show that had huge, huge ratings for a while. And Apple TV is proving difficult for him, among many others. And it points to just how difficult it is to get some of these shows off. Apple TV is an interesting one. Now, I had Apple TV for a while when I bought a new phone, haven't watched it in a while, not even sure if I'm subscribed to it. Right now, that's how weird things are with Apple TV. Not even sure. I did not pay for it. Uh, I might be on a free subscription because I bought a phone. I don't think I am. Maybe I don't have access. Have not watched this show at all, and I enjoy Jon Stewart. So it speaks to how hard it is to pull people in. It's kind of what I was talking about with Sirius. There are so many good options 
right now. I watched an episode of Succession last night. I haven't made it through. Don't spoil me. I'm almost at the end of the second season of Succession. Great show on HBO. If you haven't checked it out, I encourage you to do so. Uh, you only have so much time in the day, folks. I'm busy with work, with family. I can't spend too much time watching TV, and it's a real battle for time. And you got to be at the top of your game, man, if you're competing for TV with the amount of options they have out there. Uh, it debuted in September, failed to get traction. 180,000 U.S. homes saw the first show within seven days, but by the fifth episode, that number was down to 40,000, 78% drop off. By comparison, John Oliver, who does a show on HBO last week tonight, I enjoy that as well. Haven't watched that one in a while as well. He actually had a great episode, folks, on truckers, okay, and how they're paid recently. That is the one episode I've watched of John Oliver recently. Um, truckers, how they're paid. Many times they're classified as contractors they are forced to pick up their own gas whatever it is maintenance uh trucking right now very important in this country check it out if you'd like to that was the one i've seen recently uh by comparison he's doing 844,000 in the u.s now apple doesn't put out numbers all right so they probably cherry picked those a lot uh, a lot yes and john oliver that's what that one episode i did i caught it myself i think uh maybe on youtube i think i did um I am subscribed to HBO, but that's another one. HBO, very expensive. I'm enjoying it right now, but that's one that I'm going to cancel at some point and resubscribe at some point. They have a lot of great programs. Um, very expensive, though, on a monthly basis, unless you're really watching it a lot of the time. Nonetheless, they get into some of the numbers as well. Social media audience for Stewart show is smaller than his peers. Uh, pretty dramatic. You're talking about, I think that's 18 million. For instance, uh, Noah, I believe that points to his replacement on the daily show on comedy central 134 million probably because that show is around forever i'm guessing i'm guessing the daily show has social media followings that he got to take over uh hardly unique list of successful prominent comedians who have hosted short-lived shows on netflix and hulu already includes a plethora of them uh one of the things they do talk about here is that <clears throat> let's get down to it Yeah, so streaming talk shows that do catch on, you have to have topics with long shelf lives. And that's the tough part here is that many of these shows tend to take a while to release them. And then the stuff they're talking about is dated. And that's what they're talking about here. It's very difficult for a lot of these company uh, streamers that used to be big on a nightly basis Uh yeah, there's a long history of these kind of shows that have been so time-sensitive and tied to the evening's topic of jokes, jokes uh, such as John Oliver's show, which airs on HBO and HBO Max. I believe that airs every Sunday night. It's a half-hour program called Last Week Tonight or something like that. Uh, it doesn't matter if you watch Sunday night or Thursday night or week later has great resonance, probably because he's doing things just like the trucking, right? I can say to you, hey, this is a cool feature. Uh, it's still timely you can go check that out but stewart fans have had a particularly hard time settling in he initially released episodes every two weeks then he took four months off then march he returned from a hiatus that's part of the struggle too how do you even keep track of when these shows are new or whatnot um yeah nonetheless it's interesting and i was talking to my dad this weekend about uh on easter and we were talking about kids programming we were talking about uh the company that owns and I should get the name of it. I will get the name of it as after this break coming up. It's a private company. It's the company that bought Coco Melons. It's the company that bought Blippi. It's a company that now owns uh, Little Angels. It's run by uh, Kevin Meyer, who is the man who ran direct to consumer for Disney. It was uh, he was also <laughs> ran the CEO of TikTok for a few months of craziness uh, before he opted out of that position. He's now running a private company backed by BlackRock Money, I believe. And one of the things he said, I watched an interview with him on Bloomberg recently, okay? And one of the things he said, we'll jump over to Disney as we talk about this. You got the SPs up by 11, kind of hanging out, uh, is that he said, listen, there's going to be room for maybe three, four, five players in the industry in terms of big players that are mass appeal, okay? And you're talking about Netflix is one of them. Disney is now another one of them, okay? Prime is probably going to be one because it's going to be around forever. There's three. Apple TV is probably going to be one, too, because that's going to be around forever. That's four. Right. And then you have all these other good ones. You got Paramount Plus just just launching right now, let alone Peacock you got and stuff like that. There's not room for seven or eight 
that can compete for everybody. There's room for three, four, or five, but what he did say is, but then there's room for the people with the niche. You find that niche, they found their niche in kids programming, folks. I can, t I, folks, I can tell you, with kids in the house, man, um, I was saying to my dad this weekend, if I can invest in that company, uh, yes, Yes, they had bought Blippi as well. You heard that correctly. So I believe Coco Melon and Blippi came in at the same time. I'll pull up the article. I'll try and find it for you, Louie. Um, both good kids programs. Now they bought another company called Little Angels. Pretty familiar with Coco Melon. Pretty similar to Coco Melon. Uh, but you can see it playing out. Very difficult to appeal to the masses, even for somebody like Jon Stewart, stuff like that. We'll come back. We'll talk about it a little bit more. We'll take a look at Disney on that chart as well. Stay tuned. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, welcome back and jumping back to the headlines. So amazing this only happened November 2021. If you're not familiar with Coco Melon, yeah, they're talking about in the Tiger's Den out there, folks. And if you're not in the Tiger's Den, please come join a dollar for the year. Check it out on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, they're talking about, what do they say? Let me get it. Most watched YouTube channel in the United States. Uh, yeah, it is quite a, a YouTube channel indeed. Now, this is the article talking about Moonbug Entertainment. That is the company. Uh, it is run by two former Disney executives, Kevin Meyer and Tom Staggs. Both of those guys were in line to run Disney at one point, got passed over, decided to do their own deal. And what they talk about, they're backed by Blackstone money. Uh, they got private equity in there. They come after YouTube. 120 million subscribers on YouTube generates more than 3 billion views a month. 
Okay, uh, they got episodes that rank among the most popular shows on Netflix. I can tell you, folks, it is remarkable that I have now a one-year-old, uh, almost 15 months, Tommy, Tommy the fourth, almost 15 months old, a year and three months old. Also, have a five-year-old in the house. There's not a lot of programs that a one-year-old and a five-year-old both are really into. Coco Melon is one of them, man. Uh, today, the best intellectual property for kids is digital in or origin. It happens on YouTube, Meyer said. We're trying to build a media company for digital today. Uh, they had also bought Reese Witherspoon's company in here as well. Uh, they're going to earn about $100 million in profit this year. That is Moonbug. But what they do, folks, is brilliant. They take the company, then they merchandise it, right? Then they do deals with Netflix. They kind of ramp it up. And... I talk about it because it's important to understand the difference between that business model and then the business model of going to the masses because you can't do both of them, okay? Uh, very, very brilliant business plan, in my opinion, in terms of what they're doing. Uh, they never, And kids, I tell you, they can watch the same Coco Melon episode a million times and they still love it. And the cool thing about Coco Melon, folks, for kids, it's actually educational. All it is is like rhymes, uh, childhood nursery rhymes with digital animation with it. Uh, and we'll finish it off with Disney, folks. If you're looking at Disney, you are right back to this 618, folks. You know, if this market sells off, Disney's going to sell off with it. But if you're looking to get in Disney, man, I like it at 126. You could always put a stop in there. You're back to a 618. You're back below where you were trading at. Talking about below where you were trading at, folks, in terms of where you were in April of 2019, three years ago. Thanks so much for starting your day with me, folks. Stay tuned. We got a replay. Basil did his show live at 8 a.m. He's coming up now. And we got Larry at 11. I programming all my.